there's a lot of controversial information out there about PRP. And you're going to hear a lot more about it. Everyone is trying to get involved with it. Medicine is changing so rapidly right now, and we're trying to survive, especially if you're a solo practitioner like myself. So we're trying to do things in order to increase our, our revenue. And so one thing to keep in mind as I go through this information in these slides is that it depends on your, um, your level of expertise. Uh, more and more physicians are starting to practice outside of their scope of expertise. And so be, uh, understand that and take that into consideration. So my background is I'm a board-certified anesthesiologist as well as a board-certified pain management physician. I um, finished medical school at UCSD in 1985, and I did my residency training at Harvey UCLA in anesthesia. Uh, I practiced medicine in Los Angeles until 96, and then I moved here in 98. I took a two-year off from medicine. That was probably the best two years I've had. <laughs> So I said, when I come back to medicine, I'm not going to practice the same way I did before. So that's why I'm just not a sole practitioner as an anesthesiologist. Some people have said to me, well, why did you leave L.A.? Did you get into trouble there? A lot of doctors run from L.A. when they got into trouble with, with the medical boards. No, if you check my records, it's clean still so far. Thank God. <laughs> and uh, so even though I came here and I did anesthesia, I, I did anesthesia part-time up until 2012. I, I still was moonlighting, uh, doing anesthesia over at Scully. And that's when I first started using ultrasound techniques to do procedures, because there they do a lot of interscaling blocks for shoulder surgery. <clears throat> so I had to become very adept at doing that. I added on uh, primary care in, in 2000. I started seeing pace for primary care. I did a lot of um, uh, urgent care work during my residency. And so I was familiar with seeing pace from a primary care perspective. I did that when I first came to Bakersfield until about eight years, for about eight years. And then I just was able to build up my practice enough, and I was able to do primary care and continue to do that while I was doing anesthesia moonlighting. Uh, about three years ago, I started uh, learning about wellness or functional medicine. And that's where I started learning about PRP stem cells, hormone therapy. So I'm not going to talk to you tonight about functional medicine and wellness and hormone therapy and gut health and weight loss. All that is very important. But this is an aspect of regenerative medicine. So you'll hear a physician talking about that their functional medicine doctors are regenerative medicine doctors, but a lot of times they only focus on one aspect of regenerative medicine. And this aspect I will focus on tonight is on PRP. So these are the questions I'm going to address tonight. What is PRP? How does it work? How is it done? What can it treat? Examples of treatment. What is stem cell therapy? cost of treatment, success rate, and duration of benefit. These are the questions I get all the time. And I get these questions also from patients who have had the treatment done. They said, you know what, Dr. Beatty, I'm trying to get one of my friends to do this procedure. They have a lot of questions for, you, for me. I don't know how to answer them. Can you talk to them? So people call me, and sometimes I've called some of my patients and say, hey, can you talk to someone who's interested in this therapy? Because one thing, I don't want them to uh, uh, assume that I'm trying to sell them a bill of goods. I'm not. I'm trying to actually help people. That's my motivation. And the patients who are here tonight that are, are my patients, they know I spend a lot of time with people. I spend more time than a lot of time I'm getting reimbursed for. But I really do enjoy what I do, and it comes out in how I interact with, with my patients. So what is PRP? PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. These are concentrated platelets from blood. Autologous means that it comes from the very patient that you're going to use it on. So it's not an exogenous source, it's not coming from anyone else. In fact, the FDA only approved PRP to come from the patient and given at the point of care. So anything else is considered uh, uh, altering the, the uh, blood tissue and considered be a drug manufacturing and you gotta follow a whole different set of standards. In those uh, platelets, you have cytokines and growth factors. And those cytokines cause inflammation. So this is an inflaming procedure, so you want that tissue to be inflamed because it will stimulate the signal to turn on the stem cells to come to that area. How does it work? So when you have tissue damage, your body's trying to heal itself. And if you look at it from this perspective, sometimes I tell patients I'm like a truck driver. I'm trying to take platelets from a platelet-rich environment and put it to a platelet-deficient environment. Our joints aren't very rich in blood supply. And so when we're young, we can kind of recover pretty quickly. 
But when we get older, our circulation is already diminished for a lot of different reasons, hypertension, diabetes. Um, our blood is not very rich in nutrients. Our hormones are falling off. You know, once we get past 35 in women, we get to the perimenopausal state. Men past 40, we go in the andropausal state. And so we just don't recover as well. And so <clears throat> this is a therapy that will actually put the blood that is rich in platelets, rich in growth factors, and cytokines, um, inflammatory uh, markers, that will turn on these cells to replicate, to become the kind of tissue it needs to be, where there's bone, where there's cartilage, and even can cause angiogenesis, make red blood cells, or even new nerves. How is it done? Well, it depends. Uh, I'll, we either draw 30 cc's of blood or 60 cc's of blood. But you can use as little as 15 cc's of blood. So what I do, I will um, prep the arm, usually in a cubital space with betadine. We take about an 18 gauge needle and then we aspirate blood. And we mix a little bit of anticoagulant so it won't clot. And we put it in a centrifuge, this kind of container here. This is the good stuff right here. That little white layer, that buffy coat layer. This is blood, uh, rest of the red blood cells. And this is waste here and that's plasma. So if you see here, what we're trying to do is aspirate off the waste product, the plasma, and be left with just that white layer, which is the platelets and stem cells. And that's what we will use. So if we use a 30 cc kit, you might get as much as four cc's of platelets to inject. If we use a 60 cc kit, we'll have as much as 11 or 12 cc's. It really depends on the patient's blood count. Uh, one of the things that I do is that in preparation for this procedure, if the patient's older, especially if they're gonna have stem cell therapy, I will get their um, cell count, a red blood cell count, as well as their electrolytes, and look and see what their health is like. Now, if they have low platelet counts, the average platelet count is 150 to 400,000. So if someone has a low platelet count, you're not gonna concentrate as many platelets. So this is what it can treat. And I've used it to treat the majority of these, pro these issues here on the board. So some of you are probably looking at that list and saying, you know, I suffer with that. Maybe I have s several issues I suffer with. Um, as you see there, I'll tell you some of the things I've used it for already. I've had patients that had pretty degenerated hips, and I've done PRP stem cells successfully with patients like that. In fact, one, um, two months after he had the PRP stem cell done in his hip, he was in a tennis tournament at a country club, and he won the tennis tournament. And his orthopedic surgeon, he's known here in town, told him that he shouldn't jog anymore, and, you know, do low impact uh, activities, Maybe you should even give up golf. And he didn't want to do that. It's worked for uh, cartilage defects, whether it's in the shoulders, um, the knees, the ankles. Uh, I've used it for Achilles tendonitis, real bad Achilles tendonitis, where in the past I would be afraid to inject with steroids because I was concerned that the Achilles tendon might rupture. And I've injected for that. And within a week or so, the patients are 100% recovered. I haven't used it for any neck pain issues. I had a patient call me the other day as a new prospect, and he was referred to me because someone told him that um, they can use it for cervical degenerative disc disease, that I guess they're going to plan on injecting the cervical disc. Now, I just went to a course two months ago in Las Vegas, and this course was talking about the reason why I went, because part of that course was going to be discussing using PRP for intradiscal injections for patients who have disc pain, discogenic pain. And what it does, it actually will regenerate that disc. So a disc that's been um, uh, dehydrated, desiccated, torn, it can regenerate and heal it completely. So, and <clears throat> there was a doctor there at Stanford who also is in private practice pain management at, um, in Palo Alto. She's actually doing this. She's been doing it for the last year and a half. So I told her, before I get started with that, I want to spend a day with you and watch you do the procedure. She said, well, if you do interventional pain management, which you do, you now use the fluoroscopy, it's easy procedure. If you can do an epidural, you can do a selective nerve block, you can do this. But it's always good to have someone show you how something done and hold your hand. But that's not always the case. I hear that there's some physicians who don't know how to do this procedure, and they're trying it out. And that's where the problem is going to come in. So one of the things I want to mention today, because there's ladies here, is the, PRP, the benefits of PRP facials. And it does work. And if it didn't work, the women would want their money back. and They would be mad at me. <laughs> they wish they can do more. Um, 
But it will treat uneven skin tone, sagging, aging skin, acne, acne scarring, uh, dehydrated skin, crow's feet, and fine lines. There was a young man that uh, saw me for this. He had real deep acne scars. And I wanted so uh, much to take a picture of before and after. The reason why I don't have before and afters on my patients, they don't want to do it. They say, Bakersfield is too small. I don't want people seeing my image, <laughs> okay? But then when something <laughs> happens that's fantastic, I have nothing, no proof. So I have to go online and get these online photos, <laughs> okay? But, but there's one, this particular guy, <laughs> He was, he, he was a boxer when he was younger, but he had also had bad acne, cystic acne, so he has these scars. And I'll never forget the, uh, how it impacted me when we did his PRP facial. And one of my medical assistants no longer with me, she knew him, so she, had him, um, she referred him to the office. Right when we were done, those deep acne scars were gone. I said, no, I'm seeing stuff. I put my glasses on and I looked a little closer. He had no acne scars. His face was smooth as a baby's bottom. He looked at himself in the mirror, he couldn't believe it. He had tried laser therapies, uh, abrasions, all kind of different things, skin pills, and nothing helped him. Now, <clears throat> see this patient here? That's a before picture. How many young ladies would like to have that in their dimple in their arm? Especially when you're gonna wear a sleeveless dress. And then everybody's asking you all the time, what happened to you? Did you have surgery? Did you get injured? Did someone bite you? <laughs> well, what happened to her is she's here, actually, she's going to stand up in a minute and explain it in more detail. But she received an injection in the doctor's office, steroid shot. So she said to me, she came to me uh, about having a PRP facial, and I said, okay, we can do that. I, she said, what about my arm? You think it might work for that? And I said, let's try it. If you don't mind, I don't mind trying it. We tried it, I think it was probably, what, five or six months later. It looked like that, and she's very happy. It is a simple in-office procedure, and because I've been blessed with all the education I've had, and I really appreciate it, you never know how it's all going to come together, but in my office, I'm able to do it, and I do, I do start an IV. I sedate the patients so they get to the point of an amnestic state. I do have resuscitative equipment in there. Uh, my anesthesia training, I have endotracheal tubes, I have laryngoscopes, I have defibrillators. We haven't had to pull none of that stuff out. <laughs> okay. Oral airways. So when I do the procedure in the office, I'm able to save you quite a bit. Because if you have to go to a surgery center, now you're going to have to involve the facility fee. You're also going to have to involve other physicians. So here's just some prices here. The PRP faces are generally $500. It just depends on what I do and what you ask me to do. If I inject fine lines, if we inject your scalp, it actually will help your hair to regrow. Like women get this female pattern baldness, it will actually help them grow hair. Uh, it works better on women for some reason than men. You know, when men pretty much start getting the shiny scalp, it's just too late. You, in order to regenerate something, it still has to be alive. It can't be dead. Okay. So if you still got hair follicles there, if you got hair follicles, that's the time to do it. Okay, so, so what I do for knee injections is um, if I only do one side, uh, it's 800 bucks. If I do both knees, I charge $1,200. Down in Los Angeles, I hear that they will charge $1,500 per injection site. And sometimes they make you sign a contract that you're going to come back in a couple of months to have it done again. That's for PRP. Now, these prices are going to start coming down because more people are starting to get involved. So that's where buyer beware needs to come in. You need to make sure they know what they're doing. The same thing for the shoulder. I will charge for a PRP $800. If we do both shoulders at the same setting, I'll charge $1,200. So I want to talk for a minute about stem cell therapy. I know the flyer was basically featuring PRP. The problem is you should start with PRP most of the time with patients. Most of the time, PRP is enough. You don't have to do the stem cell therapy. And so with stem cell, it's regenerative therapy, but I call it regenerative therapy on, on, on I will hate to use the term steroids, but on steroids. Because now you put in actually the, t the stem cell that can differentiate into the tissue it needs. PRP is more of a poor man stem cell because what PRP does, it will send a signal to recruit stem cells or it will help turn on the stem cells that are in that local environment. 
but it's not like putting stem cells there, concentrating the number of stem cells and put them there. Stem cell therapy is, is the use of stem cells to treat or prevent degenerative conditions of all types. Uh, bone marrow transplant is the most widely used stem cell therapy, and that's what I do. Uh, pretty much when I do stem cell therapy, I do bone marrow every time, and sometime I do adipose stem cell, which is liposuction of the belly fat. Now, how is the bone marrow aspiration done? People hear about that, and immediately they cringe because they think of pain. But remember, when I first started, I said I'm an anesthesiologist, so I try to do things without a lot of pain. So mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal, that word means that these are stem cells that come from either a blood or a lymphatic source. And the mesenchymal stem cells, you see a newborn, every 10,000 cells he has in his body is one is a stem cell. That's why they heal so well. Okay? You can do anything to a kid almost. But look at when you hit 80. One in two million. Now, I've done 80-year-olds, and they've done well. If you don't believe this works, well, maybe you believe some of these famous people here, these athletes. Kobe Bryant obviously was able to extend his career a couple more years because of the therapy. Uh, Peyton Manning planned with that uh, degenerating neck, especially after having surgery. Um, also, Alex Rodriguez, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. It remains to be seen if Tiger Woods really fully comes back. I want to kind of throw this out there so you understand the difference. There's something called pluripotent stem cells versus multipotent. And the stem cells I tend to use are the multipotent ones. That comes from the bone marrow and the adipose tissue. This is the most complex I'm going to get here tonight. Uh, multipotent just means that the stem cells can differentiate into multiple types of tissue, but not every type of tissue. Pluripotent can differentiate into every type of tissue, but it has to be very primitive, like from an embryonic source. But then you run into chance that it might become carcinogenic. So multipotent is the way you want to go. Now, I've seen this many times when I did anesthesia. There's a video, and my staff knows it, where this guy, this orthopedist, is in there swinging away like he's going for the, the, the bleachers with a mallet, trying to get the, the, uh, this metal rod, because you have to insert a rod down the fem femoral shaft in order to put this metal cap in there right there. See right here? And so you have to get that rod out, and you have to really bang. The patient sometimes is almost coming off the table. So, you know, you got to have good anesthesia for that. <laughs> and so they end up with this large, large scar on their knee. So that's a lot to go through to get out of knee pain. And look at the consideration of that, $55,000. And that's just, you know, the average price. There's anesthetic risk. And one thing about anesthesia is it can be 99% sheer boredom and 1% sheer terror. And so you never know. These patients can develop a fat emboli or a blood clot. Okay, that's why the DBT is there. And we all know about rehab. We see people who are recovering from knee replacement. I charge $5,000 for the full PRP stem cell, including the PRP, bone marrow stem cells, and adipose stem cells. $5,000 versus $55,000. So most people say, well, my insurance will cover it. Well, you know, in this day and time with insurances, deductibles, and co-pays, you might be paying five dollars to $10,000 out of pocket just to have the joint replacement. And that's not going to be covering your rehab and all these other issues that you have to deal with. So some of you here might have these types of uh, knee joints. Phase one, phase two, phase three. All these are degenerated knees. You see in the first one, cartilage softens and you start getting these problems with impact, and you can't absorb the impact when you're walking or stepping down. Uh, and you go on to phase two, and you can see the joint space is narrowing there. And look at phase three. That's pretty degenerated there. Phase two, pretty much clearly, I'll offer them PRP, but I say if you really want to be effective, you need to consider doing stem cell therapy for that. And for phase three, I'm telling them, it, it can help you. I have done patients like that in phase three, and it has worked. Uh, but I'm also making sure I'm covering myself by saying, you understand this is experimental, this is investigational. Surgery is always an option. This does not cause you any problems in having surgery in the future. Success rate. I would say mine is approaching 90%. I can think of two people that it failed, and I kind of suspected it would fail. And both of these had severely degenerated hips. And I would not do those patients again. But both of them talked me into it. Success rate is 
as you see there, patient selection, proper diagnosis. So uh, proper diagnosis is key and the skill of the clinician. You have to know how to stick that needle where it needs to be. If you're gonna inject a tendon, they need to put the, the needle and the PRP or the stem cells into the tendon, not around it. That's where you get the best result, especially when it's golfer's elbow or tennis elbow. You have to inject it where it needs to be and you can't do that without the ultrasound. So summary view here is that PRP stem cell therapy is regenerative therapy that treats all kinds of degenerative conditions. It is cost effective and safe. You don't get infections because of PRP stem cell. You never had one. You shouldn't because this, this blood product is actually an antimicrobial. It's an in-office procedure and it probably needs to stay in an in-office procedure because it's going to be too costly if you take it to a surgery center. Minimal post-procedural rehab. Uh, most rehab that the patients have to do is a little bit of physical therapy afterwards. Provides a non-surgical option. Now, this particular patient, the reason why I put him in my slide, because when I, I put on Facebook that I was going to be doing this presentation, and so he immediately said, Dr. Beatty, he lives up in Sacramento, he said, Dr. Beatty, I would love to be there, but I want to send you my own testimony, just uh, so you can have it. He said, in 2004, I was 25 years old, and I was in a serious car accident that left me in critical condition. I had severe injuries, including my right leg, which hindered me the most. I spent so much time seeing doctors that all they did was give me painkillers. All that did was make me sick. The pain in my leg only got worse. Then I met Dr. Beatty. When I expressed my issue, he had recommended I try PRP therapy. I said, I've never heard of it, but it wasn't pills, so I said, let's do it. It's been over a year since I've done the treatment, and I have zero pain in my knee and occasional pain in my ankle, both of which I suffered with quite a bit. It realistically took about 30 days for all the pain to clear out from my knee and ankle. It was honestly an amazing feeling after so many years of discomfort. As a father of three young kids, I'm able to do things now I wasn't able to do before.